Hello, Facebook. Welcome to the Bury the Needle podcast, episode five. Wow. What a life we live. I'm five. Trying to, I'm tr- five, yes. Five. The number Eight, is four. four. My name is Trevor, also known as YT Rounds. We've also got Rocco and Oliver here what's from Divine Inc. What's going down? I'm, fucking, all I'm wounded, but there's no picture. There's no picture. I've disappeared. Thank God. There we go. Let's try and go back here. Because I'm muted. Start video. There we go. Sweet. I'm back. Yo. Just trying to uh, get our guest artist on here. She's having some issues saying that she has to pay for Zoom. Why? Don't believe it. It's a scam. Don't. Don't. Don't believe the hype. Yeah, I'm don't. just going to. Oh. To the, uh... I was going to try and share this to Facebook. That's why it disappeared. But here we go. Raise hand. Zoom participants. Where is it being broadcasted on the F This Network? It should podcast? be on F This Network and Bury the Needle. Okay, can you minus that? Okay. Then we're going to have to go on Facebook. Did I disappear again or no? You disappeared. Perfect. Can you hear me though? Yeah. Is it recording? It is recording. Okay. We are live. They're going outside, even though we're live. <sighs> Who are we waiting, waiting well, we for? We got Candy on, uh, uh, Trev. So basically, yeah. Candy is an artist under San Diego. She's actually one of our battle axe warriors, our division leaders in San Diego, the division out there. Um, I just wanted... The reason we do these interviews is see exactly which direction this tattoo industry is going in all parts of the world. Um, me, myself, I'm a consultant. I own shops. My family have owned shops for over two decades, over 20 years. Um, we don't tattoo, but we consult. We're also collectors. I've got over 80 artists on my body. Um, I've been in 80 different chairs. I've heard eight different stories. I've seen eight different shops. Um, thing is, though, the way tattooing used to be and is now, like, you know, back in the day, we used to have tables, light tables, the whole nine yards. Nowadays, it's iPads, push a number, boom, it gets printed off uh, the printer. So the industry has, has basically changed. I basically think there's not too much creativity involved when it comes down to it, because unless the artist is drawing something custom, which maybe is 40 or 50 percent of the time, That's the right. rest of someone says, oh, I like this idea here. They change a few things that you have to change at least 10 percent of the drawing make it your own idea and you don't want to copy anybody else's stuff you know and then they all of a sudden stick and paste and they tattoo it on there the initial finishing of the tattoo is how good the artist is right that's right the people you bring in could be great but the artist could be terrible at putting color in and be terrible at pulling lines you know so it, it that's that's what we want to know about the tattoo industry and now with the covid and the pandemic it's slowed down business or has it made it better for you you know over here in my shop east fan a tattoo company it's made it better yeah, because we're not doing those fucking walk-ins that waste our time. And and the thing is, what I do here, the consulting part is this. So when someone comes in, I've got this great idea. I want the sleeve, ba 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 Three hours of tattooing, they leave with a smiley face on their fucking elbows, okay? The artist has no time for that conversation. So basically, I filter the people. Yeah. When they decide exactly what they want, then I grab the appropriate artist with the appropriate style for that tattoo, you know? And if I don't have it here, that the style they want, and I know another artist from another shop, I will send them over there. You know what I'm saying? We're not that type of people like, oh, me, 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 me. We actually, I'm actually a consultant where I get other shops involved and other artists involved, right? That's the way it should be in this industry. But like I said, so basically bury the needle. We just want to know more about your shop, more about your style, more about what's going on in your hood. Right, Oliver? That's right. That's what it's all about. Collaborating. Exactly, right? And the thing is that the good thing about the COVID is that it's eliminating these people who think they can just buy a machine online and don't even know how to set up the depth. They put a fucking ad on Facebook or on Craigslist or some. I'm tattooing for $80 a fucking hour, which right there is a red light. Um, you know, you walk into shops. The thing is, there's no education for the first timer. Like today, we had a 13 year old coming to the shop. You know, my artists are against that. But the thing that I try to tell my artists is that the age is coming down because of social media, of all the aspects that are going on in this art industry. Tattooing is now part of the fashion world. People just get a cool design. They don't give a shit what it means. 
No, yeah, you know, right. when a girl wants a dragon for strength. Uh, it's on her forearm. It can be covered up by a shirt. Mom and dad were here. Um, and the thing is, well, I explained to my artist saying, if you don't tattoo this girl, she didn't get tattooed somewhere else. Yeah, maybe not somewhere safe either. Yeah. That's the whole thing. But I still have I still have limits. Like my limit's 15. And then so the girl, she wanted to get tattooed when she was 12 because her sister died and she wanted to get her sister's name and the day she passed away. These are all very good tattoos. But I said to her, I said, I'm not going to do your tattoo. And she looked right at me, Rocco, and said, I'm going to go somewhere else and get it at somebody's house then. And I said, that's fine. But just remember, I'm not fixing it until you turn 15. So you're going to have to walk around with a bad tattoo for three years. So there has to be some line in the sand at some point. Yeah. But that's the thing though, Oliver, you know, here we go. We have a young girl that's getting a pizza for Memorial. And at the end of the day, we're saying no to them. We're going to send her to a, a, a spot where she a could get disease. Yeah. B never mind the bad tattoo and exactly. see terrible knowledge for the next piece. So we have to start stepping back and maybe stepping forward to these younger generations because everything's younger nowadays. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't get my first tattoo until I was 19 years old because European parents and you, when you're 19, you're living on your own. I bought my first house at 19. You know what I'm saying? I moved out of the house when I was 16, but I went yeah. back to my parents' house when I was renovating my house, but I still wait until I was 19 to get my first tattoo. Yeah. And after that, like I said, I have 80 artists going on. I'm a collector, right? Yeah. And also, I'm also a consultant to give good advice to people on their ideas, placement, and all <laughs> so on and so forth, right? So I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome in Candy from Candy's Tattoos. She's joining us today. Just wait for her to pop up here. Can you hear my music? Nope. Hopefully not. Hello, Candy. Am I showing up? I can't see me anymore. Yeah, Candy's switching the audio right now. There we go. Hey, Candy. Hey. There you go. I can see you. There we go. Finally made it. <laughs> look at doing? all that. Look at all that sick regalia you're wearing. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm digging nice. the hat. I'm digging the hat. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is the name of my other one was all messed up. Candy, how you doing down there? I'm doing good. Doing really good. Working hard and hardly working. Keep busy though. Has this pandemic affected you in the shop? Uh, a little bit, but then again, we've been picking up lately. Yeah. Do they do they still have San Diego San Diego open or, or are the shops closed? You guys um, half of us are open and half of us are shut down. As long as we're following the regulations that they put upon us, we're good to go. That's good. So, Caddy, yeah. you know, basically what I and what we want to we talk about on this bury the needle is basically what I'm always concerned about is the direction of tattooing. Um, you've been tattooing for how long now? Uh, professionally, about six years. Grand total, around 16. Okay, so you've seen the times when there was light tables, tracing paper, um, you yeah. know, these use deodorant to put the stencil on. Um, oh, yeah. There was, even, uh, there was even a way of putting stencils on, which was, um, what were they called, Oliver, the plastics? Uh, acetate, carbon acetate. No, I have oh, a set. Yeah. I have a set of those. I actually brought them off of Dave Shore when he passed away. They the sprinkle white charcoal it. into the cracks and then they rub it in and then they would put Vaseline, just Vaseline on the skin and then they would slap that on there and it would yeah. leave just a little charcoal dust outline and you couldn't wipe it or touch it or anything, man. Lots That's of it. guys would just put water on their needles and just quickly, like, literally scratch, bloodline the stencil in so that they could see. I'm going to grab one of my acetates. Hang on a second, you guys. You guys keep talking. Yeah. I remember my uh, one of my tattoo teachers teaching me how to make 15 curved mags at the bottom of a pop can, like to make a needle jig <laughs> with the curve on a pop can and lay them all in there super oh, careful yeah. so that you get that perfect radius. Oh, yeah. So I just want to let people know who watch this to understand what acetates are. So this is before... The stencil paper. What well, some guys just draw on you if they're very good, but so this is an acetate right here. Okay, that is a cobra. Okay, I don't see you see the cobra there. That's a nice okay. one. Well, there's yeah. nature. I got yeah. the actual. Oh god. Oh, 
So this is the actual original of the set of acetates that I have. Sure. Yeah. The original. And what I did is I bought the flash sheets with these. So I got the whole bag. Cool, man. You know, so I can sit there and explain to people about the beginning of time. You yeah. know, because the industry has changed so much, now it's an iPad. Push a button, go to your yeah. printer, grab it, stick it to the machine, <laughs> you're ready to stencil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's easy peasy. Yeah. But the one thing that they're never going to change is the style of the artist. You can't. Can the artist no, you color? can't get can rid of that. Can the artist pull straight lines? You know, we teach an apprenticeship program down here, which is very tough. What thing is when they graduate from the 12 months of the schooling and you put them on 18 months of tattooing so you can critique all their styles uh, against their heads. They're artists now, right? They always think they're artists. Well, you're not a fucking artist, right? But like I said, yeah. the industry has changed so much. And what I'm asking, uh, Caddy, about you is down in San Diego, right? How is the yeah. tattoo industry? Is it a busy industry? A lot of people get tattooed. I mean... Oh, yeah, we're right by the beach, so we get a lot of people that get tattooed. We have a lot of tattoo shops, but with the whole pandemic, we have a lot of them closing down, so it's everybody else is picking up that is still open. So it's a good thing. Well, it's more regulation. Yeah, I think that's universally, every industry has been not just tattooing, every industry and every service industry, whether it's a barber or nail tech, uh, estheticians, restaurants, banks, uh, whatever gift shop, yeah. everything's so heavily regulated now <laughs> that if you don't toe the line, man, and they come in and see you with infractions, they're just going to close you down. Well, it just it just shows you oh, know yeah. the true dedication to your craft. Like, how dedicated are you? Like, yeah. you got to be dedicated to want to follow the rules, to want to keep everything going, to want to keep your customers happy. It's just what it's all about. It's business. Yeah, man. Yeah, and I guess Caddy for us being shop owners, it's nice that these guys that can't afford because usually like we're losing shops here too because they can't keep up with the rent during the pandemic. Yeah. The government only gives you so much. Oh, yeah. I got six months of rent at fifty percent. It was supposed to be only twenty five percent, but my landlord's end, I took care of it anyway because some landlord was just, you know, like that cheap. But no, I didn't. that was what I had. So I, he said 50% and then he was a hundred percent and I had to close my shop in Kitimat. And now I just got the shop in terraces. So it's, yeah, it's taking people out, man. Yeah. But uh, another good thing is also is that the, the people that couldn't keep their shops moving forward are actually looking for locations. Like I just rented uh, the bottom half of my shop that I had artist guest spotting. And I went to one young lady, uh, Nina, who's a great lady, but that's her shop over there now. So she can, Use it as her own little shop with everything here, one set price, but she does stock her own paper towel and all that stuff there. But I have her here for a few months. I hope she stays because I just love her style, how she's so mellow, so quiet. <laughs> but with the industry now. But Candy, what else is going on down there in the tattoo industry? <sighs> Keeping busy, man. Training new people. We got two apprentices in the shop right now. They're showing major, major good potential. So that's always fun. So when you do the apprenticeship, is it basically like uh, sterilization, blood pathogens, yeah. blood contamination, you know, always yep. clean? Yeah, but they're always cleaning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot a lot of drawing. If you ain't drawing or cleaning, you, you better You're be looking for another job. job. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. If you had drawing or cleaning, cool you should be looking for a different job. That's it. Man. Yeah. Um, our program usually lasts around a year to almost two years, depending on the the quality of the art that they produce, and then the steps and how fast they tend to grow with us. And and does it cost them money? No, just their time. Wow. Yeah. I charge yeah. uh, I charge uh, nine thousand dollars for a one year course, and I bumped it up to twelve thousand this year. Yeah, mine just went up to ten. Oh man! Points. Yeah, so basically, we teach them everything, and the first ninety days, I only take half the money because after ninety days, I can see if they're actually going to be artists or not. And after ninety days, I say, you know what? Yeah. Don't waste your money. I've had one girl after ninety days I say, you know what? Don't waste your money. I won't take your other half. I said, you might as well go away. You don't have the you don't have what it takes. You know, you have a, a female, 
I'm saying it's not all the same, but you have a female that's being a practice, showing up with a $30,000 engagement ring, clothes with brand names on them, and she wants to clean the shop. And I go, are you fucking kidding me? I said, you know, you got to come here and be oh, part, yeah. of the, you be part of the grind. You know, nobody cares about your fucking ring. Oh, yeah. nobody, you know, if you, if you break the damn thing or lose the damn thing, you got to put gloves on, and that's going to rip through the gloves and everything. So you got to understand that a hole in the glove could be some kind of contamination right there. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. And everything. yeah, we do that for 90 days. And then, of course, always drawing, um, learning what color, col color combinations. Um, you have to write me an essay also about tattooing, how it started, where it became from, and everything. So that's an essay that has to be handed in also. Basically, and also, I teach them on the coil machine. So... I have a coil machine. I give it to them. I said, take it apart, put it back together. Oh, I did it. All right, do it again. I did it. All right, do it again. I did it. Okay, now give me the instructions. Yeah. I'll put it together. But the thing is, well, now they understand the fundamentals about their machine. So if it does break down, because, you know, these rotary machines, they do burn out. So if you're ever on the road, you always bring your liner yeah. shader as a backup. And yeah. when they do graduate, I buy machines from an American company and they come in pieces. They have to build the coils and everything. So I try to teach the old school ways. You know, they get frustrated. I had one oh, of yeah, my definitely. Hey, Candy, I had one of my apprentices, okay? <laughs> You're supposed to solder the wires. She bought the soldering machine. Yeah. She was not working. I said, where's the solder? Like, where's the wire that you have to solder? Which was, what? I thought this thing <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> I said, welcome to the new generation of the take care of us when we get old. Keep burning Google my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Google it. I said to her, fucking Google it. <laughs> Anyways, we lost that artist to uh, oh, yeah. big, head, big head artist. You know, the big heads, you know, they become a tattoo artist for four months. Oh, yeah. We, we've actually had to redo most of her art that she did here because the color fell out. You know, I said to her, going too fast. Oh, Put it down, smaller circles, stick it in there, you know? Yeah. Yep. But they know everything, right? I got to get some ink from you one of these days, Candy, when I come down there. You still got to come up here, oh, Rocco, definitely. in almost 10 years. You haven't even visited the North yet. <laughs> I'm going to see Candy. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, Candy, have you I done... It's cold down here right now. <laughs> Candy, have you got any, have you done any tattoos lately inspired by the political chaos going on in the States? No, I haven't. Shockingly, I haven't. Yeah, but sure I know some people that person. have. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I'm sure those will start rolling in. Oh, yeah. It's fucking nuts. Any moment I was be. Oh, yeah, it's definitely nuts. But, man, sometimes I don't even watch the news with all this political stuff. I'm like, man, save the drama. Yeah. That's yeah, what, yeah, that's what I'm about. I'm on the ostrich policy. I've just had my head stuck in the ground for the last six months and pretend nothing's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's crazy, man. I mean, what they're pulling up, to me, it's showing that the Trump supporters, doesn't matter who the Trump supporter is, but it seems to me that they're bad losers. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. That's what it proves to me that, oh, my God, I don't understand what's going on. That poor woman that got shot point blank, I put that on my Instagram because it, I just couldn't understand why the guy stuck a gun out and aimed at her. When, and then yeah. behind her was four or five police officers with bulletproof vests. You yeah, know, I just, I, yep. I think it's crazy that, you know, that all these people broke into like Capitol Hill, which is supposed to be like the most secure place in the States. In the planet. Yeah, and pushed themselves right through. And like, that just makes their self-defense look terrible, you know, like. Oh, yeah. People say there was an inside person, right? On that, uh, yeah. on that uh, whole thing, there was an inside person involved, and who knows, right? I mean, it's America. America. Yeah, it's a major possibility that there was. There's probably more than one inside person. Yeah. <laughs> we got that right. Where's home security? <laughs> the home of Homeland Security. They broke into the home of Homeland Security. Yeah. <laughs> They're on vacation because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> She, the chick had a mask on. We thought she was all good. Um, right. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm at work today. No appointments today. So I'm hanging out, getting some artwork done. Hey, who, That's about it. With you today? Um, I have my I have my coworker because I'm in a private room. We have a really big shop. Yes. 
So me and my buddy, we have a private room. He's working right now. And then I have uh, one other artist here with me and one apprentice. So how big would the shop be? Like a uh, thousand square feet? Um, I'm going to say probably around there. That's big. So is the yes, rent expensive? Pretty... Is the rent I don't, I don't know. I, really, I pay a percentage. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it saves me a lot. So if I don't make anything, I still got don't got to worry about it. Oh really? Yeah, that's what happens yeah. now. I mean, the artists all they do is I take a percentage of their money and I take care of the rent and supplies. Yeah, and all the complaints yeah, and the fans and the pencils and the sharpies and the paper towel and the paper clips and the tape and the need a light and my stool's broken and there's no tablecloth and there's no sensi wrap and these are bandages. Does anybody have Windex? And we're low on cabicide. Can you get some paper towel? I think we're out of gloves. But it sounds like you own a shop. You own a shop? I tell you one thing. Sounds like you own a shop. Oh, shit. Right now, these fucking nitro gloves are $15 a box for crying out loud. You never you never oh, hear one of my dude, artists I'm ever say, I didn't get paid. American. Can you pay $30 a box American? Yes. Girl, I, I should a box American. American. Yeah, I got some I should fucking ship you your 10 boxes from here. <laughs> yeah, well, I got the glove plug. We just started, instead, we just put condoms on our hands now. Right? And use brand new socks from Walmart for paper towel. <laughs> he calls them, he calls them, he calls them. Yeah. Those are his true condoms, though, Candy. He's trying to say they're finger condoms. Yeah. I, are his condoms. They used to say I was a dickhead, now they call me dickheads. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Candy, how's the division doing down there? Everything good? They're doing really good. I got a couple of my members. They got some health issues, but they're getting that squared away. But we're all doing good. They're still working and keeping their heads held high. So all we could do right now, I tried, we just had our meeting, our first annual, our first meeting today at one o'clock. And we can't see the members. We can't see each other. We had a full full membership on Zoom Live. It was good to hear everybody and have a good laugh together. And I say, you know what? I can't see this summer us being together on the stages and the meetings around the world, but we just got to stay positive. If it happens, we do it, right? We have all our dates set up for the West Coast, the East Coast, Canada. We're going to go to Thailand in October. These are dates that we set so we can be prepared, but if the pandemic is yeah. we're not going, right? We're not yeah. going. Yeah. But we got to still keep things moving forward, and hopefully, you know what I'm saying, Caddy, one day you and I are going to hug again, right? Hopefully soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. They're already rolling out the vaccine. The nurses here at Terrace got the vaccine two days yes. ago. Yeah. But yeah, they, we got the vaccine out here, too. Does you can right? tell because they all got one eye like this now. <laughs> <laughs> Cut this fucking horn <laughs> frog out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> one okay, lazy eye and one strong bicep. Yeah, do you want to add anything to the industry of tattooing? What's your like? What's your feelings about it? Like, I mean, direction, everything. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, tell me. I like the direction that we're going down here. You know, allowing us more females in the industry. I'm loving yeah. it. Getting more more artists, a wide variety of artists, and then younger artists. That's good. Always good. Well, I've seen your work they've been pushing all day. It's amazing. And like I said, we have our global tattoo team. Hopefully in the future, we all do conventions together. You know, uh, oh, yes. our flag our, of, of our, our society and also, you know, get the artists out there. I mean, we've got about three, four good artists up here in Canada. Down in the States, I believe we have only you, though, don't we? In the society, don't we? Like, who else tattoos down there? Um, I don't know. I don't think we have anyone other than me. Exactly, right? And down the West Coast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because over here we got Oliver, yeah. we got Andrew, we got fucking uh, Chris Duval. Um, yeah. A part of the global family. And I think over on the East Coast, yeah. I'm not sure if we have any artists over there, tattoo wise. I'm going to smoke. Yep. Yeah, you go have your We're going to be coming calling it to it anyways. We got a five o'clock podcast called Open Mic, also. Candy, I'm not sure if you. Checked it out and everything. Um, Axes Up podcast. Yeah. Yeah, Axes Up. We have it live on the Battle Axe Global Facebook, which we're trying to build. Um, 
from there. Today should be a good little show and everything. But anyways, Candy, I want to say oh, thank yeah, you. Definitely. Very much. I'll, I'll be on that one. I want to say thank you very much hey, for your time today and being part of the show. Um, hopefully, we get you back on again soon. Bury the needle is something about the tattoo industry. It's also part of Malcolm's uh, Axes Up podcast, which is a variety of different shows. Trevor, you can say you didn't explain a little bit. Awesome. Yes, uh, Malcolm. Malcolm couldn't be here today because he had to go down to Vancouver to do chemo for his mother. So prayers for Malcolm and his mother. And that trip goes all well. Yeah. All right, listen, now, Candy, thank you very much. Trevor, thank you very much. I'm going to let you guys go now. I appreciate the time and everything. Axe is up. Stay Axe positive, up. okay, Candy? And hit me up sometime, girl. Thank okay? you. Thank you, guys. All right. oh, Take care, Candy. Will. Love and respect always. Thank you, Trevor. Bye, -bye. Uh, guys. That was Candy from Candy's Tattoos, all the way from San Diego joining us. That is the Bury the Needle podcast, episode five. Join us in one hour when we go live again for the Axes Up podcast. What up? We're just about to sign off here. That's the Ali Lama himself from Divine Inc. One more round. So join us in one hour for the Axes Up podcast. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Peace out. Fuck this. Fuck this.